Thanks for staying with us. So joining us on the show is a seasoned business coach, global president of the Billionaires Conclave, and chairman, Common Sense Group, Dr. Olumide Emmanuel. He'll be speaking on the forthcoming Business Sustainability Summit and also helping us understand the issues we're having currently in our nation and see how we can maneuver ourselves. Um, the weakening Naira, coupled with high inflation rates, has made things really tough for Nigeria. So let's start with that before we talk about how you are using your own platform to help uh, position people and to redirect um, um, businesses. So we are right now, fuel is now almost 900 Naira per liter. Inflation, the money that, was, that we bought last year, you can't use it to buy the same thing this year. I mean, and um, people's salaries aren't increasing. And business coaches like yourself keep telling us to invest, save money, do this. And we're thinking, how do I do that in this kind of economy? Thank you once again for the opportunity to be here. Um, it was on this same table we had this discussion. Yes. <laughs> and almost every week, I still keep getting clips on different platforms about that discussion. And I remember saying on this platform that um, whenever a policy is brought forth, it takes between six months to two years for that policy to begin to have yes. effects. You said so. All things being equal. This government is less than two years. And I specifically told us that things will get worse. I said it, it will get worse because that's just the reality of life. Uh, because many times we try to hide from reality. Few things I said, which I will repeat again. Since 1999 till date, we have never had a better government. The new government is always worse than the previous one. It has never changed. So all this deception of we are waiting for one renewed hope, we are waiting for a better Nigeria, we are just deceiving ourselves. Because it's the same set of people reinventing themselves and doing the same thing over and over again. You cannot do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. So one of the reasons why things have become worse is because things have been so bad, but in order to correct it, they are not trying to put policies in place to correct it. But for those policies to work, there are many other things that have to be in place. If those things are not done, even for the next four years, we'll still be in this trouble. What are the things that need to be done that are not being done? You cannot expect the populace to tighten their belt and go through the process when you, the leader, are not willing to go through the process. Our leaders have proven by the kind of decisions they have made, the kind of expenses they have made in the over one year, that they are unserious about cutting costs, they are unserious about tightening their belts, and then you expect people to tighten their own belt. That is why we are having the things expand beyond normal. So I'd like us to move that into the businesses, because you're, you're having a business sustainability summit, and it, 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 it is a lot of businesses are failing in this. So yes, we can tighten our belts, but businesses are paying salaries. Stockwell is paying salaries. I mean, how do they tighten their belt? In that? That, that's the reality, see. Um, when you study, I've, I've been in business now for like 37 years. I've done different kind of businesses. In this same country, I've done uh, about seven businesses that have failed. I mean, completely failed. And I've done about nine that are doing well. And they've gone through different seasons. Over 80% of businesses fail within the first five years. Another 80% fail within the next five years. So only few businesses have been able to survive 10 years. And the reason is because there are many factors that determine whether a business will succeed or not. And one of them is government policy. Mm -hmm. One of them is the economic environment within which you operate. And right now, for anyone that is in business, it's a tough time. You see, entrepreneurship is very hard and very challenging. But being an entrepreneur in Nigeria means you're a miracle worker. <laughs> because it's just extra to be able to excel. So for business people, you need to be making the tough decisions. For business people, you need to become a different kind of person that can survive in the kind of environment that we are in. And one of the things you need to do is to begin to become very creative and very innovative to do things differently from the way others are doing it. Many times, what we have in the market is saturated method. Mm. It's not that the market is saturated. The method is saturated because everybody is trying to do it the same, same way. way. But for you to be able to excel, you have to now sit down and do something that is out of what is the norm. That helps you to get the attention of the market to be able to have a leeway mm. in the okay. world that we live in. Yeah. Okay, so um, the, I, I remember when you came to 
discuss with us, I think it was immediately after the subsidy is gone. You said we have not seen the effect yet, that it will take about six months. And all of us was like, ah. 18 months. Eight, eight, 18 months. Six months to two years, yeah, maximum, yeah. yeah. And we're like, ah, no. And right now we are seeing yeah. all the multiple um, ways this thing has um, affected people. But it, it will be wrong for us not to give a sense of hope. And because it's not everybody that can jackpot. Jackpot has become even more expensive now. So you were talking about doing things differently. And I would like you to be able to give us, in terms of um, businesses that have the ability to survive this period, what would you say, based on your experience and what you've seen, what businesses are likely to fail if not totally be wiped out? And what businesses do you think has prospects to be sustaining um, Nigeria during this period? Okay, well, basically, um, we are different levels of life and there are different dimensions to the life of people. We have what we call our needs, we have our wants, and we have our luxuries. It's only when your needs are met that you begin to explore your wants. It's only when you are comfortable in taking care of your wants that you can move into the realm of luxuries. Right now in Nigeria, 75% of Nigerians are poor. United Nations have defined poverty as living below $2 a day and extreme poverty has living below a dollar a day. Right now, 75% of Nigerians are living below a dollar a day, so there's extreme poverty. So it therefore means that a lot of people in our country today are at the realm of having their needs met. Mm. So anyone that is in business today should be focusing on meeting the basic need of people. Once you are involved in meeting the basic needs of people, then you will have a leeway. For instance, no matter how poor anybody is, the most wretched man that lives under the bridge will eat at least once a day. Mm. So if they are going to eat at least once a day, we have 25 million people in Lagos. That means there are 25 million meals that needs to be served in a day. Okay. If they do three times, that's 25 million. So out of that 25 million meals in a day, mm. what component of that value chain can you offer? Mm. And once you begin to operate in that dimension, it will help you. The next thing is to realize that when people are operating at the survival level of having their needs met, you have to meet them at their level. You remember in those days, we didn't used to have all this sachet, this sachet that, mm. you have to buy what we call the baba salah, yeah. you know, the big, big things of all this beverage. But now, they are broken it down into small, small pieces. So mm. you don't need to have a big tin of milk. Mm. You can have a sachet mm. for you yeah. to just take for that day mm. and the next. So those are the things you need to begin to think. Begin to bring, because every big vision mm. have a small version. Mm. So everything you want to do, you need to begin to say, okay, this person now, okay, they are looking for a house. Okay, people need to live in a house. Mm -hmm. Can I begin to think of shared accommodation? Can I begin to think of hostels where people don't need any furniture? Mm -hmm. Just the same way we used to live in hostel, mm -hmm. bunker bed, mm -hmm. you just so that you are paying for a bunk. Yeah. And then people can, yeah. eight, 12 people can be in a room, mm -hmm. they have up and down bed. Um, so those are the ways you begin to think to be able to excel mm -hmm. in this. In this okay, house. so yes, so with, with what is going on now, regardless of even though you're trying to go micro, you know, to meet the needs, the basic needs of people. So what are your thoughts right now with the government trying to now increase the, the, the value added tax from 7.5% to 10%? How is that going to impact businesses? Most, we already know that most businesses in Nigeria are not even paying taxes. They're not even paying the 7.5%. Most yeah, people, small, also. Yes, most, most small and medium um, businesses don't even understand that they even need to add 7.5% to the cost of, you know, their, bill, their billings. So what do you think about that? How do you think that's going to impact business? Well, one of the things we need to understand is that taxation is a very, very important policy for government to be able to make money. Mm. In all honesty, in Nigeria today, we are paying the lowest level of taxes when it comes to compliance. A lot of people, if everybody, let's say if 80% of Nigerians are paying taxes the way they are supposed to pay, the government will have more money. But you see, the challenge is, how do you pay tax when you have already been taxed? Because the climbs where people pay taxes, mm. they are able to pay taxes because the things that they are spending money on in Nigeria, they don't spend money on it. Mm. The roads are there. You don't need to create your own water. You don't need to create your own light. Right here, you are your local government. You are the one that will do your water. So by the time you have done all that, you, are, you now have multiple taxations. Mm. So it becomes challenging. But because a lot of our leaders are not very, very creative. Many of them are not entrepreneurs. They're not business people. They've not run any organization successfully to know how businesses run. Number two, they are very lazy in their thinking. And because they are very lazy in their thinking, they look for the easy way out. Let's just tax them. It's the easiest way out. But there are a lot of dead equity. There are a lot of territories that are left unattended to. I keep wondering, why do we keep thinking that it's only oil that we have? Do you know the kind of gold that is in this country? Do you know the kind of precious metals? Each state 
as things buried there sure. that are billions of dollars that will give us more money than fuel. Why are we all fixated on this way? Yeah. It's lazy thinking. Yeah. They don't want to do that rigorous mental exertion to come up with ways to be able to get to they have okay, lights. Yeah. There's already liberty for every state to come up with power. No. How many states have exploded it? Eh? How many states have exploded it? So they are just lazy people in their mind. They are looking for the easy way out. Everybody wants to go and share money, and then next month again to go and share, because they know that we easily forget, before you know it, the next four years again, they are talking. Mm -hmm. All this one we are talking now, I'm telling you people, this is 2024. Mm -hmm. By the time we get to the end of this year, they are already planning 2027. Mm. Election time and the they, election. Election. Yeah, they, 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 so they, have, they, yes. they forget all the, so yeah. you push to sit down and realize that you have to look into how can I continue to offer value okay. mm -hmm. in such a way that I become indispensable okay. to the market. That's the only solution. Okay. Apart from that, because nobody's going to look. Yeah. So how how important is you know research and visibility study? I will call the English. You know, in starting a business. Just yesterday, somebody tweeted that they don't break. 150 million naira poultry and killed over 5,000 birds. You know, government doesn't worry about your loss. They worry about uh, forcing their own side. At the FCC, he lost that amount of money. Now, this is someone who had a clear vision and he invested hugely in a sector that has huge returns because yeah. 5,000 birds, 150 million, you can imagine the level. So how important is it that, you know, your research that you put into and how do you avoid any government policies I say, well, feasibility study, having a business plan is very important, but the world that we live in right now is a fast-changing world. And anyone that has really done business will tell you, no matter how powerful the plan, there is no business plan that goes according to plan. Mm -hmm. Because theory and practical are two different it. things. So it's good to have that feasibility study, it's good to have that business plan, but it is more important to be current. Mm -hmm. Because being current is the currency of life. You have to be current with current affairs, government policies, and the changes in your environment so that you will not be having tunnel vision, focusing on your business and wake up one day and discover that the world has changed. Mm. So many people have business plans, but they are not conversant of the changes in the environment. I'm not interested in politics. I'm not interested in news. I'm not interested in this. But mm. those are the places you will hear what, as we do morning stuff now, yeah. you have said 7.5% is going to 10. I just heard it for you. Know, I just came back. So mm. I just heard it and said, okay, Okay, 10, okay, if they are going to do that. Already, as I was sitting there, I was already thinking, <laughs> I'm putting some things in place, it's going to be implemented, where do, how does it affect my business? Mm. That's the way it works. So whatever business plan you had, you didn't have that one in your business plan when you started. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't have that, so, right. so we just need to continue to evolve. And that's Let's our, talk about your summit coming up. I know, I know that the business is sitting with, we are bringing in people, to, because this is part of the issues that we need to help yeah. businesses to see how they can redirect. Tell us about, about that summit coming Okay, up. well, you know, I'm the global president of the Billionaires Conclave, and one of the things we do is to try to help people to become global players and to build for sustainability. So we have two major events every year. The first one is the Conclave Summit that takes place in March. So every first week of March, we come for two days fully residential, get locked in and look into how we can continue to evolve. And then the last Friday of September, we now have an entire day to look at business sustainability. Because when you are a businessman, there are different stages you go through. You start a business. And then little by little, the bigger begins to grow. You're like, okay, this thing is growing. You know? Then you move from startup to growth. When it's beginning to grow, now how do I scale this thing? Then you go into scaling. After that, you now want to say, okay, now we are stable. How do I stabilize? So you stabilize the business. Then the next thing is, okay, let's expand. Let's diversify. But the final phase is sustainability so that you can now hand it over to the next generation, mm -hmm. so that that business can now become transgenerational. In our climb, we don't have too many businesses that have survived 50 years, 100 years, mm -hmm. because majority of the people in business start with survivor mentality. Let me just take care of myself and my family. Survivor mindset cannot build a transgenerational business. Mm -hmm. So we now decide to come up with a conference where we focus on, even if you are starting, start with sustainability in mind. Right. And that's what we've been doing. So two years, three years ago, uh, we brought in Tara Feladro Toye, uh, and we brought in um, Nam Diezigbo of Slots. And because they've done business, and then they've done 25 years, 26 years in business. So we brought people that have done at least 25 years. Come and share with us how you've been able to survive all the different seasons. And then I dealt with, you know, why businesses fail, how to build transnational businesses. And it was amazing. Last year, we said, okay, let's bring people, because with what happened in COVID, the entertainment industry went through their own crisis. So we said, let's bring in people in the, you know, entertainment sector and in that sector. So we brought in our, you know, MD Mama, she was with us. 
your view has been 10 years. I've been able to build something like this for 10 years. And then we brought AY, the comedian, to share with us. It's built a global brand. I've been able to do that. And then I also now spoke about, you know, staffing your business, corporate governance and all the stuff. So this year, our focus is on leadership. Because the economy and the world is in different dimensions now. And if you are not an exceptional leader, you can't survive. Your business will go down, you will go down. So our focus this year will be on leadership. Because as the leader, so goes the organization. Mm. If you know better, you will do better. Everything rises and falls on leadership. So I'm bringing two leadership gurus. Um, Nia Desoya is an amazing leadership guru. He's raised a lot of captains of industry. So he's going to be coming to speak to us about building centenary businesses. What, who is the kind of leader that can build a business that will run for hundreds of years? And then um, we're going to be uh, bringing another amazing, amazing speaker, Linus. Uh, Okorie from Abuja. He, he runs um, Guidance of the Nation, uh, got me, and he's going to be talking to us about transformational leadership. How you, as a leader, can become the kind of person that people want to follow, and the kind of person that people want to listen to, and the kind of person that can build the kind of organization we're talking about. And then I'm going to be focusing on a lot of things that has to do with understanding that the customer has changed. Customer expectation, customer preferences has changed. Customer service has gone to another level. And then how do you execute? Many times we sit down, we do meetings, we come up with things. Six months later, how far? Nothing has been done. Mm -hmm. What are the principles of effective execution? Mm -hmm. To be able to ensure that all the plans we have, they are done. What are the, so it's going to be an amazing time. And it's the old day. Um, the way we do our events, for those that are members of the Billionaires Conclave, is absolutely free. That's part of the package. So if you're a member, March, you come two days fully residential, free. September, one day fully residential, free. But what we have done is we now open it up to people in the public to say, come and enjoy what these people are enjoying. Because not everybody can afford to be a part of the billionaire's conclave. But at least come and be a part to say, ah, OK. So this is what's happening. So um, it's somewhere around 50,000 now for the fully residential event because they're going to be lodged in Sheraton. And it's amazing. Hotel now he's charging three fifty four hundred for one night to yeah, sleep yeah. and wake up. I say, yeah. I, I, this zoo money. This zoo, yeah. By the time you know, one of the hotel told me they they spent three hundred million. I don't know how much you guys are spending. TVC three hundred million on Nepa on power every month. So I say, why do you just jump to one night to come and sleep and wake up three fifty four hundred? That's what. But that's the reality. So it's seven hundred fifty thousand there for those that will come for fully residential events. So you get the entire event, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then on Saturday morning, we have another hangout before you check out. But for those that are not going to be fully residential, it's just 500,000. And that covers for also uh, breakfast, then it covers for the buffet and the entire event. And we always have manuals and materials that we give to people. But um, what we have done, the last time we gave discount to people, uh, but the discount has expired. But we, we, in fact, we have almost sold that. I almost, you know, we're just looking at, do I need to still come and <laughs> talk about it? Because when we do our events, we don't want crowd. We have a limited number of people so that we can deal with it. So we actually just have 13 slots left. Just 13 slots left. And what we have decided to do is, if people are willing to pay this week, we'll still give it to them at the discounted price. So if you want to be fully residential, instead of 750, you just pay 500,000. Mm. But you have to make that payment between now and Friday. If you don't pay by Friday, if I, it's just 13 slots left. And then if you want to do the non-residential, instead of 500,000, you pay 300,000 naira. And then you are, you are part of us, so you can call the numbers, get in touch with us. And was already on the screen. Yeah, all Everybody, my social media platforms. Short break. Yeah. When we come back, we continue with you. Don't worry, you're here with us today. No if problem. Stay with us. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our guest with us. Talk had a question. Yeah, so um, everybody, everybody knows I'm going to, if, if Dr. Nobide is doing the program, I'm, I'm there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be at this event, but I worry about, you know, before we spoke about the, the, the conference, we were talking about Nigeria running business and all of that. And I've always been a bit um, of the opinion that the only way to solve Nigeria's problem is to empower entrepreneurs so that they are able to become um, sustainable and employ the labor that puts people to work. Um, I would like you to help us, help business owners understand the importance of the investment and how government can also partner with trainings like this to empower businesses so that they can grow. Well, basically, um, all over the world, it's small businesses that grow the economy. Um, like we always say, it's not the job of government to be in business. The job of the government is to put policies in place, create an enabling environment, and put infrastructures in place for small businesses to thrive. 
However, when you are now going into business, I keep emphasizing that you don't go into business for survival. Mm. Once your mindset is, ah, let me just do something so that I can take care of myself, take care of my family. I don't want to work for anybody there. You're already starting with the wrong mindset. But when you are going into business, you are going into business because you want to offer value and make a difference. And when that becomes the reason why you are in business, uh, you realize that you achieve more when you don't get, care who gets the credit. Your focus is just impact, transformation. And that will now also translate into staff. If you are a businessman in Nigeria today, you realize that majority of Nigerian graduates are unemployable. Mm. By the time you employ them, you have to train and retrain for them to be able to do what needs to be done. So once you are going in with transformational mindset, with value creation mindset, when you start a business, part of your vision will be anyone that comes to work in this organization, me mentoring them will be a part of my assignment. So I'm going to look beyond their certificate because some people are not well brought up, brought up even from home training. They don't have basic home training. So it's not even about, so somebody that's from the foundation of the home, there's no home training, they don't understand the basics of our life. They now went to school, curriculum is outdated. They came out, so they're already having double level of jeopardy. So when you are going to start a business, have it at the back of your mind that even though I'm employing them to pay them, I will look into how I can help them to become better in their personal life, in their grooming, courtesy, understanding but life. do and that, then, they yeah. go away in No, seconds. that is where I'm going to. Because that's why many people don't do that, but we are, that's why we are all here. So you do that, then even in the business, you are teaching them how to write letters, how to align, how to speak, how to do this, knowing fully well that they will go. But you are helping the country to develop. Ah. Mm. Yeah, that's the way it works. Because see, what you sow is what you reap. Because when they go, you employ the next one, you start all over again. If people before us have been doing what I told you to do, if they go, the next person you employ, you will need to redo that. Somebody else will have done that before they came to you. Yeah. So let's have that mindset of we are developing our country. So I have a commitment that anyone that works with me or in any of my organization, by the time you leave where you are working, Anywhere you go to, they'll be thanking us. Ah, where did you come from? Valid. And we have had people head on tech from us to us. It's a testament that hey, when bigger companies, bigger organizations are coming to us to come and take you, we have done well. And that's the mindset we need to have. Then when it comes to the government, you see, we need to go back to local government. Thank God we're trying to, we're getting back there. You see, this government, government in Nigeria is big. Lagos State alone is more than about 14 different African countries. A lot of African countries are 2 million, 3 million. And they are a whole country, they say they get presidents. That's just a like local government chairman or a councillor here. So when we are talking government, government, we are looking too much to the federal. Mm. It is local government. In every local government, you know, we used to have technical schools. Mm. We used to have skill acquisition centers. All those things have been lost. We used to have summer school. We used to have a summer job. Yeah. All those things have been lost. That is the way the government partners with people. In every local government, there will be libraries, there will be technical schools, there will be skill acquisition centers, because everybody does not have to go through that route of academic education. Yeah. You can now go through technical education and be skilled to be able to offer things to the market, because certificates right now is not certifying anybody. Okay. okay, so this brings me to my question. So I just like the fact that you delved with, into the local government aspect. So I'm talking about education, and this is education at every level, even the lowest level, which is basic education. Because even when you acquire skills, you need like the basic education to be able to like even build clients, to even tell your customers what and what your services you're offering. So what are your thoughts in terms of, even in schools now, curriculums that they should teach business? Because for me, you know, I have a PhD, I have two masters, but then it took me a long time when I started um, my own business to even understand the business of law. I'm a lawyer. And to understand the business of law, I didn't know that there was a business of law. Yeah. It took me a long time to even understand why they have managing partners in law firms. As in those people that manage the law firm, the business of the law firm. So upon how educated I am, I didn't get that. And I struggled over and over again. And it took me a long time to catch that. So what's, what are your thoughts in terms of education to the basic level of teaching businesses and how it can be, even to primary school level, to secondary school level, how that can be, you know, that can infiltrate, uh, yeah, infuse okay. and enter the Okay, so one, one of the things, well, I believe in balance. One of the narratives that is out there now is that education is a scam. Education is not a scam. The curriculum is a scam. Mm. Education is not a scam. I never agree with you. But go ahead. It's the curriculum that is a scam. Mm. Now, you see, there are four things that education does for you. It helps you to know how to read, how to write, 
how to calculate arithmetic and mathematics and how to think analytically. Mm. So when you go to school, it now shows that this person knows how to read, write, calculate, and think. That's what education does. So everybody needs to go through that basic education where you are able to do those four things. Once you are able to do that, the next set of education should be things that can help you to offer value to your generation and solve the present day problem of the world that you live in. But many of our curriculum is not doing that. And now when it comes to education, you are talking about business. You see, there are technical skills and there are business skills. Now, the fact that you have a technical skill, you know how to design clothes, you know how to sew, you know how to bake, does not mean if you start a bakery or you start a fashion house, you are going to succeed. Mm -hmm. Because that's technical skill. The business skill is how do we get customers, how do we employ staff, how do we manage staff, how do we manage the resources, how do we scale up. Those are the business part. That's why, as a lawyer, there's a difference between the legal profession and legal business. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between the medical profession and medical business. You can never become rich mm -hmm. through a profession. Mm -hmm but you can become rich through the business of the profession. profession. And that comes through education. But you see, schools need to change the curriculum to include all these things. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, every individual needs to have the desire for personal development. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how much exactly. they teach you in school, it is you. You see, but they say when the student is ready, the teacher will show up. You are the one that will say, okay, I'm tired of where I am. I need to know more. You go for books. You go for seminar. That's why the kind of seminar we are doing right now is something that if you're a businessman today, yeah. um, I've, we've been doing this seminar now. There are people that come in there. Um, uh, last year, yeah, I no, two years ago, a man came. He was 71 years old. He's been doing business for over 40 years. But he came there because he said, that he listened to me here on your program. He came all the way from Milani, and I was like, I've been listening to this one, but this one I need to go. Why did he come? He has run business for over 40 something years. And with all these uh, ex men and whatever, a man that had over 4,000 hectares, he said he has not been able to enter his farm for over four years. A man that had over 4 billion in the accounts in Nigeria is mm -hmm. suffering. Why? Because he saw his money, four billion that he thought was like something, something million dollars. Before his ready eyes, he said, he came to see him, say, what do I do now? And the students are not even interested in the business. Because this Japa Japa, by the time they go, yeah. they, they are not interested in what you think. So, so I just think that we should be committed to personal education. Mm -hmm. So that even if the schools don't give you, then you teach yourself. Toba B A the one they didn't teach you, you teach yourself. And the education is there, information is there. Yeah. Training, seminars, virtual conferences, all kinds of things are out there, both free and paid. How to train myself mm -hmm. anyways, you're correct. Right. So I like the fact that you've talked on self-development. Or you know, some professions or um, skills have what we call this internship stage. We see it more with the artisan kind of business, but we don't see it when it comes to, you know, uh, professions like, you know, accounting and law, and it's a very important part of it where somebody must intern. Then you, on a path to self-development, are interning at a particular place. They are teaching you the work. Because Amaka mentioned lawyers. As lawyers, that's one thing we all did. Work, you will learn the work, you go to court, you come back. But your boss knows the business of managing the firm. Mm. And he's not teaching that rules because he want, cannot open trade secrets. Mm. Because you're a potential opposition, Abi, mm -hmm, to you. How do you, while interning, take, you know, catch some of these things. I want you to address it because there are most lawyers coming up thinking they are interning and they have learned the business. Yeah. So okay. in life, we say that some things are better caught than taught. Some things are better caught than taught. When you talk about education, there are dimensions to education. Emulation is the first step in education. Then observation is the next step in education. Then training is the next step in it. So it's level. So you start with emulation. As a child, you see people do things, you do it. Mm -hmm. If I come to a table, I don't know how to use the cutlery, and I see people using the cutlery, I'm just watching to say, okay, ah, okay, they put down, okay, left hand, okay. <laughs> Nobody's knowing, but I'm emulating. Mm -hmm. So you emulate, you observe, how are they doing this, how are they doing that. So many times, a lot of people that go to learn, why they are sending you around, you are not intuitive. Mm. You are not thinking. You see, I'm a pastor, and the Bible is one of the most amazing books. Whether it's business, marriage, you'll be shocked. When Nehemiah wanted to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, he went to the king. He said, give me a letter to this person for wood, this person for this person. Visa to, how did he know them? Mm. That means as they were coming to visit the king, he was paying the attention. Okay, that's the minister of finance. Bless you, sir. He was connecting, collecting complimentary card. Mm. Uh, so that's the person in charge of visa. Mm. So he didn't go to them. 
he didn't abuse the position, but he utilized it to be able to prepare himself for opportunity. Because it's better to be prepared, waiting for opportunity, than for opportunity to come and meet some When the time now came, he now went. He knew exactly what to ask. Can you give me a letter to this, this, this? Because you could not come before a great man and be wasting his time. So it's what we call the elevator pitch. Sharp, sharp. He has asked, and he got it. Somebody else will have said, excuse me, sir. I'm trying to try. What can you do to help me? <laughs> you don't have anything to... So when you are in that law firm, be wondering, okay, they are paying all of us. How are they paying us? Mm. How did they pay all of us? You are paying light, you are paying... Ah, okay, they say, okay, go to court and go and do this. Okay, how much did they charge this person? Ah, oh, ah, the accountant will say, ah, it's three million. Like, three million. How did they arrive at three million? Mm. Ah, how can you... So, but their own mind is, eh, you mean they collected three million, they're just paying on 30,000. Mm. <laughs> That's what they are saying. Okay, how did they arrive at three million? What are the costs? In, in, uh, okay, we went. Okay, so what? So that's how you think. And when you begin to think that, it will help you to ask the right question. Mm. Because the question you ask will determine the answer you get. Those people who say they don't want to teach you, if you ask, there are questions you ask that people will say what they don't want to say. Mm. Mm. And that question is what makes you to be able to I get really the answer. I really wish people I go, can they follow you. They are questions go. you ask. Let me, let me, I have to go on a point. Ah. Let me try to think. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's go on a short break. <laughs> Continue. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thanks for staying with us. We still have our business coach here with us, Dr. Olumide Imano. And before the break, he was talking about um, the three levels. That's the emulation, uh, observing, and then training. And, and how you can catch. Because sometimes people work somewhere and you have no clue. You're just there, you just go and start thinking. And your mentality is the same mentality. Like, ah, these things are hard. When people are going in the same industry... And they're seeing things and they're able to improve themselves. That's what I was going to add to that. Yeah, so um, when Nima asked the question, what came into my head was how, what I did. Because when you want to achieve what people that have gone ahead have achieved, and you feel like they are not giving you the reply you want, it is by observing what they are doing. So I checked what trainings did they do, what programs did, do they attend, what communities are they members of. So if when, when I started following Dr. Lumide was based on, okay, I've seen, there's somebody I've seen who follows him and he has results, so I said I must follow the same person. Um, when I heard they went to LBS, I said, okay, these people, all, all these people that I've seen, every single one of them have achieved success. They all went to LBS, let me go to LBS. So if I see two or three people that they said they read a book, I'll go and read that book because it means that book gave them value. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked not what they did today, I went on Instagram page, Facebook page, and scroll down three, four, five years ago to see what they were doing. And by seeing what they did then, it helped me to understand what I needed to do now. Wow. Because you can be looking at them now and thinking it is what they did now that gave them the results. It's what they did five years ago, eight years ago, ten years ago. So I, I believe that it's extremely powerful that um, what, what she asked as a as the question is something that every body in your office, if the person, even if it's a corporate world, not entrepreneurship like my own, in the corporate world, they say, mind the gap. Where I am, I'm a junior executive. I want to become senior executive. How many, go to the LinkedIn of, your, of the senior executive. Mm -hmm. Check down how many courses your, is, he did IMC, he did CMC, he did PMP. All those things that he has written there, you go and do it. If you do it in five years, you will be even ahead of that person's position to achieve growth. But let me bring you back to business sustainability because it is, <laughs> it is a lot of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I've spent more on consultancy and I've earned less money as a company. And... It did not make sense to even people within my office. Why are you spending so? Why are we spending more money paying consultants, paying for training when our account balance is not balancing? Can you help break down the importance of training and capacity building and consulting even when it looks like the money is not working? One of the major mistakes that a lot of uh, people do is that when they want to cut costs, they cut training budgets. And that's a major mistake because, you see, if your people don't know better, they cannot do better. I'll give you a true life story. Many years ago, if you know the story of the banking sector, uh, when the banks, the new generation banks started, they started setting up the schools where when people were, are employed in the bank, they now send them for like one month, two months, three months. Mm -hmm. They camp them, feed them, do everything, train them to understand the banking culture and also continue to pay them salary. Then came this new MD of one of the bankers. I said, ah, I don't, we cannot be training them and paying them at the same time. Mm -hmm. So let them do training under the senior people mm -hmm. that are there. So they scrapped that, thinking they were cutting costs. Mm. And then they brought one guy, put him under another guy. The guy comes into the banking sector, not understanding policies and all those stuff. He just listened to the man like, yes, sir, yes, sir. Because you're in a culture of, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. And the person who was saying yes, sir, to that was like his hero, was a fraud. 
and the guy was using him to commit all kind of work. We are signed this one. Yes, sir. But if you have gone to training, even if they know. say sign, you will read yes. before you sign. Time. You will not just sign because your guys. So he went through that. By the time they will discover the fraud, they now call the guy and say, Ah, that's a. Uh, your guy said I should sign. Hey, it's me that signed you. Mm. Ah, it's your guy that said I should sign. Mm. He said, This I didn't read. Those. Ah, what happened? Did mm. they not train? He said, No, I was not trained, though. Mm. They now realize that that's when they went back to the training. Mm. So, <laughs> training is important because now you saw this consulting and all the things you are looking, you are preparing for the next phase of your business. Mm. Your people are salary earners. They are not entrepreneurs. You are the entrepreneur. Mm. You know what you are doing, you are seeing what they are not seeing. It may take two, three years, five years to say, oh, that's what Oga was doing there. Mm. So it is important for you to train yourself, train your people, and prepare them for the next phase. Because you don't manufacture the weapons of war on the battlefield. Mm. Mm. You, you, have, you don't manufacture your weapons of war on the battlefield. Mm. It is before the battle that you prepare the weapon. That's what you are Let doing. Let me take this color. Yeah, okay. Usman from Abuja has been holding. Good morning, Usman. Uh, good morning, madam. But everything Dr. Olumide is doing, I agree with him. However, the don't people cannot work in Nigeria. Mm. What's what All what he's saying is correct, but they cannot work in Nigeria. Mm, it's what, what you're saying, cannot work. Never work. All in, in America, they have a mindset, a total mindset that makes all those systems work. But in Nigeria, we don't have that mindset. Our training does not give us a mindset of what is. If, if you think I'm lying, let me put that where the land is not a book. It does not work. Whether you go to an enough not firm working, or you don't firm, before you can get the contract, you have to buy your way in, which is going to bring it for us mm -hmm. So what is what you think is correct? But you know what you're saying. Okay, so, so let me so let me help. It's already working. I'm a testimony. This is a testimony right here before your very eyes. It's already working. You see, one of the things we need to understand is that many times bad news spread fast. And good news because of humility, everybody just wants to say, okay, oh, our culture, when your yam is big, don't cover it. Cover it. It's already working. And when he said we read the books, we do this, I've said this over and again. Let me repeat again. Principles are universal. But you see, when you want to now apply those principles, it is personal, contextual, and geographical. Mm. So I can come here now and tell you real estate is very powerful, but not in Ukraine, mm. because they are in war. Mm. It doesn't mean what I've said is wrong, but it means that when you now look at your context, mm. at this stage, it may not be what I should do. Mm. So any principle, everything I've said that you say is right, is already working. There are people in Nigeria doing businesses, making money, and it is working for them because they know how to contextualize what they are going through. So he says something like, before you can get business, you have to bribe somebody. Even if you're a lawyer, you may not be able to get business. Now you see, what you are calling bribery is because when you needed the relationship, you did not have the relationship. Mm. But if you understand relationship, you are supposed to have a relationship before you need the relationship. Mm -hmm. So you start being a relational okay. person. There are people that you know that don't know you. Mm -hmm. There are people that you know, they know you, but they are not powerful enough to help you. Mm -hmm. There are people that are powerful enough to help you, they don't know you. Mm -hmm. So when you understand it, and before you get to a point where you need people, start making friends. Mm -hmm. Start making friends, start connecting with people. Mm -hmm. Start being good to people. Hey, hello, how are you? You get their complimentary card, mm -hmm. and then once in a month, just to check on you. Mm -hmm. Not because you are looking for anything. Mm. You are investing. You are sowing. The, the day you now want to withdraw from that relationship, mm. and you now say, I'm sorry, I, 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 oh, that man is always staying in touch. Mm. That person is always staying in touch. Mm. That's how relationships are built. It's not when you now need somebody, you now go there. How will you, you come money. to me mm. to say you are a powerful lawyer? Mm. And I've been in business for 15 years. You mean I don't know any lawyer before you? Mm. I will now give you business. Mm. It's the people I've known no, that I've so. tested that. But if exactly. I don't know you, mm. but when you were in secondary school, mm. You came for a seminar mm -hmm. where I was there. You started following me. Mm -hmm. And you always, by the time you go, oh, that girl has graduated. How are you? Ah! Mm -hmm. There will be something that says, okay, let's encourage this one too, to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, you are just starting. Mm -hmm. This is 200 million. Just start with this 2 million one first. Mm -hmm. Let's start. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. So these things okay. work. Let me they talk about work. leadership because I know that at, at the summit, you're going to have, talking about leadership focus. A lot of leaders are frustrated yeah. because um, if we, if we, there are two parts of leadership there's a leader and there's a followers. And I think that's what the last call I was trying to allude to. The mindset of the followers are just not right. In a company, you invest, you do all the works, you do the textbook yeah. things, you train them, and many of them are just not bought into the vision. So as a leader, you feel like your hands are tied. You're doing everything Dr. Lumide asked you to do, but yet the people I have hired, who they are just not aligned. Yeah, 
I agree with you. See, that's why I said earlier on, you see, perception, perspective. We are all sitting on this table. Because of where you are sitting, it affects your perspective. Because of the lenses you have on, it mm. affects your perspective. I used to be there. The way, when I speak with authority and with confidence is because I don't talk theory. I have suffered. I have made mistakes. So I speak from the point of I know what I'm talking about. I have trained, 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 trained. You will train them, they will leave you. They will be using office to apply for another job. You will do until I gain perspective that look, it will continue like that. You can't change that one. Don't worry about what you cannot change. Change your perspective and see that anyone that comes here, this is a training school to prepare them for the next place they are going to. Once I did that, and even now, as they say, well, so whenever you are leaving, let us know. I don't have that connection of, oh, this one will soon leave me. I poor. When next they go. But guess what? Most of the people I trained that I let go of, mm -hmm. they are coming back today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in the real estate, pertinence, mm -hmm. all these alone, they are my realtor. People that were collecting commission mm -hmm. that I was giving 5,000, giving 10,000. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Our life page, all these people. Mm -hmm. Look at Tokyo, how many years? Three years. Mm -hmm. Look at the realm she has gone to. This, but today now, I can sit down. If I tie all of them down, they will still be my company now. Maybe we'll be talking minimum wages now. This You have to pay us this. Mm -hmm. But they are doing amazingly well. Yeah. Let us change our perspective. So as a leader, you cannot control what you cannot control. Let me take control this the one you can control. From Abuja, when I come to you, Amaka. Good morning, work. Hello, good morning, you're live. Yeah. Your name, good? your name is Wok from morning. Abuja. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. 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 Um, well, um, I do very well. Uh, so I'm to see you. Um, one thing I want to say about you, you know, the perspective of you. Uh, it's a bit muffled, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? It's very muffled, but go ahead. How about now? Can you hear yeah, me now? Better. 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 All right, thank you. So, uh, as I was saying from the perspective of your uh, guest earlier, you know, he made mention of something regarding our leaders. That is the first mistake I feel like we all make. These people don't put, I mean, possess any, you know, trait of a leadership. We should be calling them rulers in the first place. Because a leader should lead by example, as you, have, as you rightly said. How many of them are now leading by example? None. And the ironic part is still that the citizens will still be like, you know, in support of these people at the end of the day. So who are we now deceiving? All right. Thank you very much, Wok. Let me go on a short break. When I come back, we we'll continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have our business coach with us today, Dr. Olumide Emanuel. You had a question. Yes, please. Okay, so we, I, I believe that we can't talk about business without talking about money, right? Or financing or funding. Mm -hmm. So um, what are your thoughts in terms of what will you say to business owners who um, they want to scale up? They are scared to scale up, maybe because of interest rates now with the banks and stuff that they won't be able, they might not be able to pay back with um, the different policies coming up that might impede on those finances. What do you say to them in terms of their mindsets? scaling up, taking a loan, getting funding, you know, because it's most people fine. want to do that, but they are scared to scale up their businesses. What okay, do you have to the, say about that? The richest man in Africa is Dangote, and I think they said they, have, they keep overtaking yes, themselves. Mm -hmm. But we all know he's a debtor, he's owing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is a difference between good debt and bad debt. Mm -hmm. But before we even talk about going to a bank loan, you know, I said earlier on that businesses start with startup phase, mm -hmm. growth phase, scaling phase, stability phase, growth and expansion, there's sustainability. Mm -hmm. But now, a lot of people in this part of the world, one thing I've noticed is that we want to own everything by ourselves. It is better to have 10% of a billion mm. than to have 100% of a thousand. Mm. So many times, when it's time to scale up, investors, venture capitalists will not give you money when you have not had something that they can see as either an hypothesis, mm -hmm. a point, or something that has worked. So once you have done something that has produced a level of result, that you have a track record to say, this is our books, this is the trajectory, this is how we have gone, then look for investors. Because investor fund is a cheaper fund. They come in as stakeholders. They are not expecting you to be paying them this return every year. Or no, 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 they are coming in to join. So if I need... Let's say I need let me, a billion. Mm. 
to take my business to another level. If I go to bank to borrow one billion, I'm going to be paying interest. Mm. 30, 32 different things, mm. and a lot of things can change. Economy can shift on me. But if I say, okay, I want to do a billion, this business is now a 50 billion business, a 30 billion business. But for that one billion, I want to let go of 10% of my business. Mm. That means I will get that one billion without having to pay interest, but letting go of 10%. And that 10% I've let go gives me the one billion to now work at my pace and do better. So we need to always think beyond just going to bank. Bank, you, at a point, you may have to go, but there are things you can do without having to go to the bank. Mm -hmm. There are things you have, and that is where creative finance comes in. Mm -hmm. And it's better to operate with that. Use what you have or use the low-hanging fruit than to go to bank. That banking should be like a last resort. Because what many people don't know, for every loan you collect in any financial institution, there are two things you must sign. Mm. It's part of the fine print. Number one, they can change the interest rate at any time. Mm. And you have to agree to it. Mm -hmm. Number two, they can call for the money at any time. Even if they say, we are giving you this loan for five years, they can decide to say, we have changed our mind. We can no more do five years. We need our money Three in years. six months. And you have to agree to it because it's part of their debt to run business. And things can change. Central Bank can come up with a law that cancels whatever they have agreed with you. Let me take Toby from Meron. Thanks for calling Toby. You're live. Good morning. Thank Good morning. You for your um, I know Mr. Tolu is talking about um, the summit that is coming up. But a lot of the work has happened to get. So thank you for your office for giving us this opportunity. Um, sir, I would like to ask how long should you be in business or uh, uh, before you know, oh, this is not going to work, then you have to back out? Today is time for you to know, ah, this is not going to work, let me just do something else. Or do you just be patient and keep? doing it because we know in Nigeria things are not really um, going as it should be. So is there a time for you to know this is not for me, let me go into something else. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to answer you but let me say this. One of, one of the things we need to understand that in life there are different aspects of life that does not have a yes or no answer mm -hmm. uh, and they don't have an answer that is generic to everybody. Because different business, different industries, different sectors have different gestation period and different factors. Um, Amazon, they kept investing in Amazon, according to the information in the public domain, for about 13 or 17 years before it started making money. Facebook, eight years. They just kept putting money, putting money, putting money, because they believed that it was like a bottomless pit, but we can see the result now. So we know what Elon Musk has done, putting billions upon billions, losing money. But I will say to you, to now give you my own answer, five years. Whatever you do, I've studied, I've been in business terrain now 37 years. I've run businesses that have failed. I've run businesses that have succeeded on a global scale. So I can tell you that anything you do, and you put in everything, you are developing yourself, you are doing adjustment, and five years is not showing results. It's time to move on and do something else. Mm -hmm. And that may mean, listen to this, a change of strategy, a change of location, a change of position, or a change of business. So it may not mean that you shut the business, but it may mean that ah, the strategy I'm using is not working. I have to change the strategy completely. It may mean a change of location. This location is not going to help this business. I need to move to a new location. It may mean a change of position. I am not the kind of person that can make this business work. So let me step aside and be a founder and get somebody else to be the manager of this business. And it may not be a change of business completely. To say this business is not going anywhere. And then you check out. So five years. You know, I, I, know, I know somebody who does business. And the person is not trying to scale. And it's a business that is very, very lucrative. It's scalable. It's scalable. But the person is comfortable with the, this small money that is coming. And people are trying, and they are men, because a lot of men don't like to go for training. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe I'm, I don't want to be sexist, but there are lots of information out there that can help a man to grow his business. But sometimes ego gets in the way. Or feel like, oh, you're a businessman, you know these things. What, what does Illuminate Woman want to teach me? What does Larry Lisa, I beg, I beg, leave me. I can manage what I'm doing for myself. But there's the, so how do you help somebody who know he's doing the basics and he's getting results, but he needs, he needs information. To, he needs to be encouraged to get to the next level. How do you help that kind of person? Um, you cannot help a chicken to fly. Mm. If it is not there, it's not there. 
You cannot teach a man anything except you help him to discover what's already within himself. Mm. When you try to motivate a chicken to fly, you frustrate yourself and frustrate the chicken. Chickens have wings. Birds have wings. Birds can fly. Chickens cannot fly. Wings does not equal to flight. What makes them to fly is on mm. the inside of them. So mm -hmm. most of the time, what we are supposed to do is to continually see how we can help people bet hunger and desire inside them mm. so that they will be the one looking for the solution by themselves. Everything that is externally motivated without an internal agreement will never work. Mm. That's why they say you can take a horse to the river because you cannot force the horse to drink. But to force the horse to drink, there is something you can do. Put salt in his mouth. Start putting salt in the mouth of the horse. The horse will become thirsty and look for water, water by itself. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, so how do you put salt <laughs> in the mouth of the horse? Put them in environments and around people and places that inspires and motivates them to be better. You see, when, okay, she came into the billionaire's conclave, before she came, she said, ah, oh, oh, I can't afford that. I said, look, okay. and let me pay some mental. I said, forget. If you are paying some mentally, you are not ready. To stretch. Hey. I said, when you enter that place, and you see your mates, and see younger people, mm -hmm. you will wake up. When she came, she said, ah, what is this our 30 something? Also, billion Nigeria tower, you know. People are talking billion turnover as if, is it not the same Nigeria? And this is not fraud. This is clean business. Our mindset changed. There are many things she's doing. I'm like, I talk a level because I'm not, I don't even need to be motivating and be talking. Sometimes I say, I say, hey, talk about why are you doing this? How are you doing that? No, this kind of. And, but now I'm like, okay. Because she's going around pursuing things for herself because the thing has come from the inside. Mm -hmm. So if you have people around you like that, put salt in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm reading comments and I've listened to two callers who think it's impossible to do here. How do you? Apart from the salts in the mouth, <laughs> you know, change this Nigerian popular mindset, you know, that things can't, can't work, work here. here. There's this, we just see, we, if you enter two, three ministries, they jam you. You just think until Japa. So when you're mentoring somebody, the person most likely will use your resources in your office to Japa. Mm. How do you change this pessimistic mindset? It's, 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 a challenging, it's a challenging thing because the environment continually fights it. So I give you an example from the point of being a pastor. I've been a pastor now. I've been a minister now. By October, I'll be celebrating 35 years in full-time ministry. Mm. And I see our poor people in my church. Thousands of people. I was seeing in church yesterday. Thousands. You see everywhere full. But in your mind, you are like, is this how these people will continue? Because you know that what will help them, they are not ready to do it. So I've pastored for 35 years. I've taught people, these are the things you need to do. These are the things you need to do. But they don't believe. They believe that it is pray for them. Mm. Oh, and one miracle will just happen. Because happened. it's a unmerited uh, favor, we're all looking. No. <laughs> you know, the person that gave unmerited favor shed his blood. Mm. Anything that is free is mm. not cheap. Somebody paid for it. Mm. So, we, you see, you cannot pray your way into miracle when you are not the kind of person that can undo the miracle. Mm. You can't expect somebody to anoint you to be a pilot, anoint you to be a medical doctor, <laughs> anoint you to be a billionaire. It doesn't work like that. Mm. So, in our world today, no matter what you say, until people have encounters that changes that. You can't help them. Mm. I've seen, I've actually had a pastor people every week, and they tell them, they, see, they are still there 30 years. Mm. And you are like, is it that difficult to make one million? But it's like, and I started with them. Mm. We're all trekking. So it's not as if I came from everyone. Mm. As I was practicing, I said, ah, I've discovered this thing. You know, 1998, when I came to, I said, ah, my people, all this, as we are paying 10% from now, is a law. As you are bringing 10%, you must be saving 10%. Mm -hmm. Don't bring any 10% if you are not saving. You don't have a future without saving. 1998, 2024, I started doing it. Those that did it, they have changed something. Eh, 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 not eh, enough. Eh, eh. So like, let's talk so, about the, the money is not enough. The money is not enough. I don't have enough. Um, I can't pay for this training. Um, it is those that have money that can attend these things um, and all of that. And some people are calling out that, how can you be a pastor and be charging this much money for a training? Don't you see the way the country is? Like you I've really just said, to help us, you like I've just said, I've been preaching money. for 35 years. I don't charge. I see preach yesterday. They didn't pay. <laughs> so there, there is audience for everything. Now, there's a difference between Pastor Lubi Demana and Dr. Lubi Demana. Mm. Pastor Lubi Demana is a pastor called of God, ordained of God, to use the word of God to help people mm. to fulfill destiny. 
Dr. Lou Demano is a man that has gone to train himself to become a professional in his field. Mm. He has two PhD, he has two masters, he pays school fees. Prayer and anointing oil was not the school fees that he paid. And then he uses that information to help businesses and organizations that are interested in doing that. And because of his faith-based belief, he does free events to help people, and then he does paid events for those that can afford to come into the paid events so that he can do something more intensive with them. Every information that you need is available on Google. Mm -hmm. You don't need to come to my seminar to have information. Mm. YouTube is there. It's just lazy mindset and mindset of people that don't understand the way the world works. And if you are coming to a meeting, go to Sheraton by yourself mm. and ask them, how much is your haul mm. to rent this all? So by the time you go to uh, Marriott Hotel, Marriott Banquet Hall right now is 7.5 million for one day. I'm doing two days meeting, they're 15 million. Mm. So I pay 15 million for all. You will now come for free. Oh, it's just, uh, see, so uh, it's not for you. Dr. That's why I said that, that's that. why I said that this meeting now nah, it's not for everybody. We don't even need crowd. I, I agree that you do your free events, yeah. but you are doctor and pastor. So there's no way there there must be a meeting point confluence inside this two. <laughs> How many do, because you can see a potential in somebody who doesn't have the means. Yeah. And you as you're gifted, so you will see there will be two, three members of your um church or your family or your neighborhood that you'd see two, three people and say, this person can grow. But this is, and you, this person, I will give scholarship for every event. The, every year the, we do that. Yeah. yeah. So how, how many have you been able to use as your this, example? This year alone. Mm -hmm. This year alone. We have given scholarship to 147 people this year alone. Maybe I was here for the to talk event. about the January yeah. one. Free yeah. and paid. The January one we did, I came here now to announce let me, it on let this me ask you concerning, <laughs> let, me, let me ask you because then the sustainable the sustainability system because there are people who are watching us internationally and thinking, how do I join? Because when in, you, you've been going on a global tour, meeting Nigerians all over the world, many of them are trying to start businesses, own, uh, be entrepreneurs, do something home. And they would like to also attend this. Is there an online version for them to attend? Most of our events are not virtual. They are actually in-house. You have to physically come. Why? You see, many times we don't realize that there are some things that are even not healthy. And I'm, I'm, I'm holistic in my view. You want to go for a meeting from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. online, as I now, to have your eye on the screen for 12 hours. It, it's not healthy. It can't you, can't, you can't walk. It can't work. So let's just face reality that everything is not for you. The one that is for you, go there. The one that is not for you, leave it for those that, are, that it is for. Don't argue that why are you people, they, they face the one we concern you. Mm. We are wasting time on what is not our business. There is so much, look, the same people now, I will still be back because the free one again is in January. I will be back again to talk about the free one. They will still not come. Mm -hmm. You come to, you go to Abuja. When are you coming to Ilani? You go to Ilani. When are you coming to Patakot? But we have only two American embassies in Nigeria. And when you, you want visa, your you find your okay. way. Mm. You find your way. People are not serious. Mm. I've been around enough with proofs and evidence and track record to tell you people are not serious. Mm. They are just looking for excuses to stay the way they are. People that are serious, when you are thirsty, you don't ask the river to look for you. You will look for water. Mm. When you are really thirsty, when you are really ready, you will go for it. So if you are ready, contact us. Tell us again about it. The... So the Business Sustainability Summit is coming up Friday, the 27th of this month of September just a few weeks from now. It's a whole day event. So if you are supposed to be with us for the whole day, you don't have the funds to do the fully residential version, just come. We we'll start by 9 a.m. from 8 a.m. registration, start 9 to 5. And instead of 500,000, you pay 300,000. Mm. And I can tell you, when you come, well, I have a testimony <laughs> here. There are people that have come to our meetings. And you've been there, you were there last year. By the time they finish, mm. they will now be bringing more money by themselves. To say, no, 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 this thing is worth more than, or what else can we do? Ah, ah, we have to pay. It's just, it's something we have seen. So it's 300,000 instead of 500,000. But if you want to be a part of the fully residential, then you will stay with us up to Saturday. Then we have a dinner, a coaching session. On, so we'll finish by five. You go and rest. By seven, we'll now sit down and do a coaching session. And then on Saturday morning, we'll do another hangout over breakfast before you leave. So call the numbers on the screen, 0809. 144-7423, or 0802-305-9058, 0802-305-9058. And then pay before Friday. We have only 13 slots, <laughs> and if you are not paying by this Friday, you either pay the full price or you wait till next year. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe very strongly that um, if we know better, we'll do better. 
So make sure that you are learning. Go online. There are a lot of courses on YouTube, absolutely free. With COVID, a lot of Ivy League universities all over the world have come up with a lot of courses, four weeks, three weeks, five weeks, eight weeks, absolutely free. A lot of entrepreneurs, organizations, and philanthropists have put money into many institutions, sponsored them to come up with courses to give people relevant skills for the present day world. Fourth Industrial Revolution, Fifth Industrial Revolution, AI, robotics, analytics, coding, everything free. They are all online. Instead of using that 200 naira to be insulting and gossiping online mm -hmm. and be talking about who did BBL, who disappointed who, who broke who, who did they serve very fast, work on your life. Mm -hmm. Nobody grows young. Everybody grows old. Yeah. You think you are young. Before you know it, you are 30, you are 40, you are 50. Work on your life. Fix your life. And stop wasting time on irrelevant things. Nobody will help you plan your life without your direct mm -hmm. involvement. So if it's going to be, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. An object will remain stagnant until a force is applied. Your life will remain the same way it is until you do something meaningful about it. Let's find some questions for you online. Let's see. Uh, while we're waiting for questions to drop, okay, let me just put this. KG Nesta says, quoting you, when you try to motivate chicken to fly, you will frustrate yourself and the chicken. He said, Dr. Lumide Emmanuel, word. So people should mm. put that on their table and work with it. Um, oh, yesterday I was driving from the from school shopping, and my son said, "Mommy, problem is a good thing, right?" I was confused. I was like, "Eh," and I said, "Yes, now the problem you find when you find solution, you get money." And I've never had such a conversation before. So I was like, "So which kind of problem you define now?" <laughs> because me, I don't want problem. And he was like, "Yes, now you solve the problem and you sell it and yeah. you get money." So how should Nigerians be looking outside now? Because probably a great full grant yeah, now. Yeah, money, money. Uh, this I've, petrol I've, now. Yeah, I've said it on I'm this sorry, platform please, before. Please, yeah. can I just add so that because yeah. the same thing. And <laughs> also for someone that is a hard worker, resilient, the whole works, mm -hmm. but then they don't know what type of business they should mm -hmm. do or they don't know mm -hmm. what they are passionate about. So let's tie it together. So I've said it before. There are 10 places where money hides. It's in my book, go to my social media platform. Everything is there. 10 places where money hides. Number one, money hides in people. Mm. We have over 8 billion people on Earth, over 25 million people in Lagos, mm -hmm. about uh, 270 million people in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So this is people. Money is in people. If you solve problem for them, you will get money. For number two, money hides in problem. So every problem is money in disguise. Nobody pays you for the problem you identify. They pay you for the problem you solve. Mm -hmm. Everybody on Earth today is making money by solving problems. Mm -hmm. The food seller is making money by solving your hunger problem. The school is solving money by solving education and ignorant problems. The landlord is solving shelter problems. And that's how it works. So if you want to make money, look for problem to solve. And once you're able, that's why I spoke about the basic need. What are the basic needs? When you solve it, you are good to go. Then to come to your uh, question, you see, there are things that we have been taught and that we have practiced that we later discover is not the ideal. When we were growing up in business, when I started out, you get a product and then you start looking for markets. Yeah, I have this product to come and buy. Then we later realize that it's a wrong formula. The first thing you're supposed to do is to go and look for a market, a ready market, a hungry market that is looking for something to solve a problem for them. You now create a product to go and give to them. At that point, the market is waiting for your product. Mm -hmm. Before now, we are told, pursue your passion, pursue your passion. And then people pursue passion. They ended up with passion. Why? Mm. Because we now realize that passion is powerful, but passion does not pay early. Mm. So, pursue your passion. Stay focused on your passion. Mm. But while you are building and focusing on your passion, get something else you will do to sustain you before your passion begins to pay. Because passion does not pay early, but when it begins to pay, it can pay for life. And then, because you are pursuing your passion, does not mean you should not take advantage of the opportunity to make money that is around you. Mm. I don't think that... All the people that are making money, is Dangote passionate about crude oil? Mm. Is he passionate about spaghetti or cement? It's a business. Do you understand now? So yeah. he's maximizing the opportunities around because of the problem he has seen. Mm. Why did he go into fuel? Mm. He saw that this thing, this country is not doing, let me go and make money there. Because everywhere there is problem, there is money. Mm. So to answer that question, that pursue your passion, discover it, pursue it, but while you are pursuing it, get something doing. That I, keep I, I wanted to mention together. this comment because yeah. I mean I think it's also similar to all the comments we've been seeing so so, yeah. so maybe this is something you also need to see as a problem to solve. Okay. Because this person is saying that I have opened three businesses for my wife 
and they have all failed. Mm. She has gone for trainings, yet the businesses have failed. So what is her problem? So obviously there are many people getting information, they are reading books, they are, but they are still not getting you through. See, the missing link is mentorship. You see, many times when we talk about mentorship, people think we're just hyping this thing. Because you see, you see, a mentor helps you to be able to contextualize your confusion. Because a mentor is one that has gone through what you have g gone through before. A, 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 one of my pastors came into my office with his wife, argument, hungry. The guy has given this woman three million at a point, five million at a point. This same kind of story. Nothing was working. And the guy was frustrated. And they came. And as they were talking and talking and talking and talking, you see, she doesn't, doesn't understand. I will give her money. She will be selling on credit. She will not collect money. She will be telling me, yeah, I feel like, let's leave the money alone. Da, 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 da. So after they have said everything, so I asked him one question to go back to what I said earlier. I said, did your wife ever come to you to say she wanted to start a business? Hmm. Or you are the one that told her she should go and start a business? African they kept quiet. The local one. They kept quiet. And... The woman looked at me, and the way she looked at me, I said, speak. Don't be afraid to speak. She <laughs> said, Pastor, I'm not a business person. I'm a career person. Mm. But the man feels you should be a business person. You should be a business person. So most of the time, that chicken cannot fly. <laughs> the, the woman, if somebody is coming to tell you, I'll give you another example. In 12 years ago, one of my pastor's wife, they came to me, problem. The wife was telling the husband, I need 80 million to start a school. 12 years ago, 80 million to start a school. And the man said, you are my wife. I know you have been in the educational sector. You cannot run a school. And the woman saw it as, you don't believe in me. How can you look down at me? You know, he said, no, you are a good person. But school is a business. You don't have the business skill. Because for you to be asking me for 80 million, it already shows you don't understand that you're supposed to start and grow. Yeah. How many years ago? 12 years ago. This year, 2024, I sat down with the same woman. She wants to start a school. I said, so how much do you need? She said, 10 million. <laughs> now she's ready. Yeah. She said, 10 million. When she said, 10 million, I knew she was ready. <laughs> but I now told her, I said, 10 million cannot work. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I said, so let's look at it. Now the school has started. Mm -hmm. And everything that has been spent on that school, mm -hmm. less than 60 million. Powerful. Started, children are resuming now. So many times, these things, when you have a mentor, they'll be able to help you. So don't force That's it. all we can take on today's show. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Dr. Olimide. It's always a pleasure having you. Yes, sir. And, uh, thank you for having me. From you. That's all we can take on today's show. Hope you learned a few things as we have. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.